Cardiomyopathies are diseases of the heart muscle tissue. Cardiomyopathies represent a heterogeneous group of diseases that often lead to progressive heart failure with significant morbidity and mortality. When talking about cardiomyopathies, we often focus on the ventricular heart muscles, the bottom two chambers of the heart. Remember, the heart is a muscular pump, which pumps blood all over our body. The cardiac muscle fibers, or cells, have a single nucleus. They are branched and joined to one another by intercalated discs. The intercalated discs contain gap junctions. The intercalated discs and gap junctions form a syncytium of cardiac cells, allowing the heart to contract in a coordinated, unified manner. The desmosomes hold the fibers together when the heart contracts. And the actual contractile units of the cardiac muscles are the sarcomeres, which is made up of myosin and actin filaments. These two filaments slide past one another to cause a muscle contraction. What happens is that the sarcomere shortens during muscle contraction. This is called systole. Systole is when the ventricles contract and pumps blood out. The sarcomere lengthens, and this is where the cardiac muscle cells relax. The relaxation process is termed diastole. This is when the ventricles fill with blood, preparing itself for another contraction. Because we're focusing on cardiac muscle cells and cardiomyopathies, we need to learn some fundamental physiology. Remember, there are three major determinants of myocardial performance. Preload, afterload, and contractility. Focusing on the ventricular cardiac muscle cells, preload is the amount of blood entering the ventricles during diastole, when the heart is relaxing. An increase in preload means a stronger contraction and this relationship is the frank starling relationship, which can be depicted with this graph here with di end diastolic volume on the x-axis, how much blood enters the ventricles, versus stroke volume, which is the volume of blood ejected by the heart with each uh, contraction. To put it simply, as more blood enters the ventricles during diastole, this increases the length of uh, the resting sarcomere, which builds up tension, kind of like a spring. Tension builds up as the ventricles fill with more blood and then bang, during systole, when the sarcomere shortens, it has all this tension and so it just increases the contractile force and therefore the stroke volume. An increase in end diastolic volume therefore increases stroke volume normally. Afterload is the other determinant of cardiac muscle function, and this is the force the cardiomyocytes must overcome to pump blood out of our body. Contractility of the heart muscle can be independent of preload, uh, and for example, the autonomic nervous system ions can influence cardiac contractility. To finish off this basic anatomy and physiology, diagram. You know, troponin is attached to the structures here and is important and involved in muscle contraction. Cardiomyocytes also contain many mitochondria to produce large amounts of ATP, which is needed because the heart muscles always demand this energy. It's constantly pumping. Cardiomyopathies, as mentioned, are diseases of the heart muscle causing them to become abnormal enough to lead to heart impairment. And there are many types of cardiomyopathies, but they can be easily or neatly divided into five main types based on its anatomy and physiology. So firstly, the most common is dilated cardiomyopathy. As the name suggests, it is dilatation of the ventricles. Dilated ventricles make the cardiac muscle cells weak and so impairs cardiac contractility, and systolic function. Second type is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and this is where the ventricles have hypertrophied. Hypertrophied typically involves the septum area, the interventricular septum, and this results in filling issues in the ventricles, and so causes a diastolic dysfunction. And 
is also an important cause of sudden cardiac death in young people. Restrictive cardiomyopathy is where the heart muscles become stiff. They're not elastic. They're characterized by infiltrative, non-infiltrative, or storage diseases causing this restriction, this stiffness. Restriction of the ventricle means that the sarcomeres cannot really lengthen effectively, leading to diastolic problems, so filling problems. And this will obviously lead to reduced cardiac output. The ventricles build pressure in the atria, leading to dilated atria. The fourth type is one that uh, is not really well known about, but it's arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. And this is a problem usually of the right ventricle caused by mutation in the desmosome complexes. Um, the things, remember, that hold the cardiac muscle cells together. Unclassified cardiomyopathies include things such as peripartum cardiomyopathy, tachyarrhythmia-induced cardiomyopathy, as well as Takotsubo's cardiomyopathy, also known as uh, broken heart syndrome. So each of these five categories or types of cardiomyopathies can be further divided by the pathogenesis. So primary is where the cardiomyopathy is primarily confined to the heart. This is usually genetics or inherited cardiac conditions. Secondary, uh, secondary means that the cardiomyopathy is secondary or occurs as part of another systemic disorder uh, as a result of toxins or inflammation, infection, or other random things. Cardiomyopathies are diagnosed with echocardiography. Some are diagnosed with cardiac MRIs, such as infiltrative diseases. Other important investigations include a chest x-ray, which may show signs of heart failure, troponin, which may or may not be elevated, as well as renaturetic peptide, BNP, which can be elevated if there is a significant component of heart failure. Treatment of these cardiomyopathies typically involve heart failure therapies. So let us focus on each of these five main classifications of cardiomyopathy in more details. Please click on the links to learn more about each of these cardiomyopathies.